This is a web development tutorial from revelweb.com. This web components tutorial will teach you how to build web components using best practices for the future web. This tutorial covers building and understanding the structure of web component, how to make use of the shadow DOM, using a HTML template within a web component, detecting when component attributes are changed, and making use of the webcomponents.js polyfill to ensure cross-platform compatibility. So this is the web component that we're going to be building. It's a simple date widget. It displays the current date and the current time with a tick interval which updates every second. Using the web inspector we can see our custom element date widget here um, and inside you can see that it makes use of the shadow DOM. Also you can see here our theme attribute and if we run a bit of JavaScript to update that dynamically you can see that it will actually change the theme when that is updated. Okay then, let's get to it. So before we can start any code, we first need to set up our project. We have a simple project here where within the root of our project we have a components folder, which is where all our components will go. We've got an index.html, which is blank at the moment, but that's what will kick off this project and make use of the components. Um, inside the components folder we have our date-widget.comp.html file which is where we'll actually put the code for our component. Uh, we use the comp um, extension inside of the actual file name so we can easily identify that that type of HTML file is actually a component and not something else like a standard web page etc. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, we're just going to add some standard HTML to index.html page and this just does all the simple stuff, it sets up the head and the body and adds a title etc. Um, but for us to be able to use our date widget component when it's ready, um, we're going to need to import it into this page so we can actually make use of the custom element. So to do that we are going to use the link import um, element and we're going to point that to our date widget component in the components directory. That will actually import it into index.html now um, and we can make use of it when it's completed later on. The next thing we're going to do, because we want our components to be cross-device and platform compatible, we need to use a polyfill library called webcomponents.js. Um, we need to download that and import it into our project. Um, luckily though, to save a bit of time, I already have it available. So I'm just going to stick it directly in our project in the root. There it is and then obviously just in the standard way before we import our component I am going to just include that and now we're pretty much ready to start work on our date widget component itself. So as part of this tutorial um, we're going to look at some standard boilerplate code which is kind of a great starting place when you want to build any kind of web component. Um, so if we go into date widget component.html and we're going to paste in that code which is available um, from the tutorial which you can just copy and paste and this is kind of the default place that I always start with when I build a new web component. So let's just take a quick look at that now. Um, so at the very top we've got the um, HTML template which is basically where we're going to have all the styling, the CSS um, and the HTML stuff for our actual component um, and then underneath within the script tags we've actually got the um, JavaScript that kind of stitches it all together. At the very top we basically grab the template um, using the current script owner document um, selector so we can actually pull in that template into our JavaScript. Um, then we create a prototype object based off of the HTML element prototype. Um, Moving further down, we've then got the created callback, which is executed when this uh, web component is created. Um, and then we grab the contents of that template um, and using this.createShadow root, it's going to create a new shadow root, shadow root specifically to this component. Um, and we're going to actually add in the content of that template. So that will be this stuff into the shadow root. And then that will be actually encapsulated within our component. Um, the next uh, function is the attach callback which is actually executed when this component is attached to the DOM and we make use of it inside index.html. We're not actually going to use that as part of this um, tutorial but it's one of the very useful um, standard callback functions available when you're doing components in this particular way. Next is the attribute change callback. Um, this is fired every time one of the 
component attributes is changed so as you saw when I showed you the component at the beginning of this video we have the theme attribute and when that changes this is executed and that's when we can actually run some code to change the theme of our component um, and finally we have the all-important um, document.register element function which is basically where we register our element on the document and say this is a custom HTML uh, DOM element called date widget which we'll then be able to use inside our index.html page um, and of course we pass in our prototype that we set up here with all our JavaScript. Um, so this is a really good point to start off with when you want to build uh, a completely new web component. Now we have the basic skeleton of our component completed we can actually move on to creating the date widget itself. The first thing we're going to do is complete the template what I've added to this template here is just some simple CSS styling to style and position the elements within the component. At the bottom here we've got the different colors etc for our different themes, our green, red, blue and gold themes that we're going to support as part of this component. The HTML itself is really simple. We've set it as a default theme to start off with as green um, and then we've just got some left and right position divisions where we can place um, the dates and times etc within those. So we can now move on to this JavaScript of our component. We've got the template completed. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to declare some constant variables um, at the top of our component here. Um, these are just basically going to give us the string values for the months and the days of the week. Um, then what we're going to do is inside the created callback, we are going to add um, some variables which are going to basically grab the different uh, elements from within our template. Um, so here we've got, we're grabbing the container, the month, the day, day long and time uh, elements that you've seen in this template here. Just so we can then use those variables to manipulate them um, and update different times and dates. Next then, to do just that, we're going to need to add another function to our web component called draw. Which I'm just going to place underneath the created callback. Um, so basically this is then a custom function as part of our prototype. Um, it, gets a new date variable um, and then basically updates the inner HTML for all these different elements we just selected up here with um, the different date values based off of the current date. So of course this is brilliant but obviously until we actually call it it's not actually going to do anything. Um, so what we're going to do is update the create the callback again. So we're going to call it initially um, which first of all is just going to then draw those different values straight into the template um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to use a set interval to basically call that function every second again which will give the illusion of the ticking clock um, which we saw at the beginning of this tutorial. This then should now be a fully functional web component so if we go back to our index.html page and basically request that we want to use our new custom component um, we had a default theme of green um, just to prove the concept of adding in the different attributes. Now if we actually run that we can actually see our component working and there we go so as we've got the left and the right and um, we've got the different um, month and days of the week values and then you've got the ticking clock thanks to the set interval we've set up there. We've now seen the fully functional web component um, which just leaves the last thing to do which is basically being able to um, react to changes of that theme attribute and then update the component's theme accordingly. Um, so what we can do with this is, uh, first of all we need to add another custom function called update theme um, which basically takes a theme value and providing its green, red, blue or gold we're then going to update the container class name um, to container plus that new theme value. So as we added uh, green to be the default at the top here basically when this function is called it's going to update that value to be whatever theme is specified. Um, and what we're going to need to do is, so we want to be able to detect when this attribute is changed and we can do that as part of the attribute change callback. So if we add a switch statement in there um, which will look for the attribute name, so when the attribute name is theme um, we then call that function we've just created with the value specified um, and at the moment it's green. But of course what we also want to do is we want to be able to um, allow the user to specify a value here um, and then on load be able to update that theme value. So what we're also going to need to do is um, we're going to need to add one more line to our 
create a callback to basically just call that function we just created with the startup value of that theme attribute. Um, so if we go back here, we've currently got it set to green. So if I change that to gold and we then run this project again, we can then see that it starts up with gold. And then if we use a little bit of JavaScript, to now basically change the attribute on that DOM object, change it to blue. When we run that, then you can see that that will actually change. Um, and of course, we can then change it to red and back to green as well. So basically all that's doing is this function gets called every time any attribute on that web component is changed. So we just watch for when it's the theme and then specify um, the new value as part of that function we just created. In summary then, we've managed to create a fully functional web component using nothing but standard vanilla JS, HTML and CSS. Um, we understand a really good boilerplate code to get started with web components, something you can reuse over and over again. Um, we've seen how to use the Shadow DOM, how to use HTML templates um, for the component, and we also know how we can easily react to attribute changes using the attribute change callback. Um, hopefully this will get you going with components gives you a really good start um, and it'd be really great if you could share any of your creations with us that'd be amazing thank you